I didn't see you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Gail, for noticing that. I thought it was okay. automatic. Um, anyway, with mm -hmm. having two ears and one mouth, mm -hmm. speaking less than you talk, and what we need to do is to learn to ask questions. And that is really key to a good recruiter. So you inform by dropping the little seeds of information and then you can invite. And so, um, you know, Steve, can I ask you, how do you uh, generate that interest in your parties? And, and I'm gonna be speaking, I think, in terms of um, what, what kind of parties are you mostly doing? Multi-day or express? I'm doing mostly the express parties. All right, so if you'll just speak on, on express parties and what do you do to generate interest? Sure, so when I first um, set up a express party with the host or hostess, I immediately, um, first I share with her how to set up the party. Most people don't realize that if you try to invite 25 people when you're setting up the party, that Facebook's going to block you out. So I've run into problems with that a few times. So I, I walk my host through um, setting up the party with just me and one or two other people to begin with, and then begin inviting 20 people every 20 minutes, right? And try to get at least 100 people invited um, like a day. Um, it, if they can, I mean, or before the party starts. So the first thing I do when the party is set up, I go on and I do a live video just introducing myself and I personalize each one. I haven't created a, a template, so to speak, because I like to drop the person's name in there. I like to talk about um, that hostess's uh, goals for the party um, because hopefully prior to setting it up, I've already learned a little bit about my host and what um, electronic they're trying to get or what um, items they're really interested in. So that would determine whether, you know, we're shooting for the 650 goal so that they can get the 60% off since we're in the month of May um, on the electronic item, or if they um, just are shooting for that $200 goal to get a stoneware piece. So um, I talk a little bit about who I am, a little bit about the host's goals. And in that very first video, I already am talking about supporting our host by booking parties. And that's another way that the hostess can get rewards as well. So I drop that in there just very delicately. I don't drive it home, um, but just a quick, so they, they hear it. Um, when they first log on. <clears throat> okay. And, and then, sorry, do you want me to keep going? <laughs> um, yeah, just for a minute more. So then, uh, you know, then I start talking really about spoiling the hostess. There's an image that I use that says, let's spoil our hostess. Every order placed helps earn her some awesome rewards. Um, and that, that gets posted right away. And then as people come in and they, um, you know, they get introduced to everyone or um, sometimes, you know, the party isn't set up until the day before. So you don't have a lot of time with that. But I always host coach my hostess um, some templates about reaching that five party. I mean, that uh, five order pre-party hero challenge, right? Um, and then I, I start to talk with the hostess about the booking and who do you think would be, be good to ask if they would like to book? Who do you know that has shown interest in booking parties before? Um, and we just begin, we begin that relationship so that I, I know who I should be reaching out to. Excellent, excellent, okay. And so, um, well, let me ask you this. Hey, Gail. Do you have a system that you use for um, keeping track and following up? Oh, yes. Um, and if you've not seen this, I, I think I shared it with Maureen with you not too long ago. I used to just use a, um, a um, 
composition book or whatever notebook you know to for I had a page for each party and I would write down all my guests and you know make notes on the sides which worked well but uh, there is if you go on to dash in the resources there's something called the guest tracker and it's just a nice little sheet of paper it doesn't really have enough lines if you have a big party so sometimes you have to use more than one sheet but but it's uh it's very helpful because you can go through I, I mark I add I, I add extra things you, you got yours Maureen I do I, I don't think you can see it but I will um address what you just said that it really doesn't give you but about 10 yeah. uh, lines so I printed on both sides mm -hmm. but I really like it though because it's it's got spaces for notes I've started I marked down who fills out the prize slip on here I mean I add extra I add Few extra columns on it but it keeps me very organized and then i can go back even after the party closes i can go back and look to see if i missed somebody if i didn't get in touch with everybody before the party closed you know i can go back and you know if somebody was a recruit lead or or you know interested in booking a party then i can go back and follow up yeah uh, oh thank you i know i have started using that too and i i'm finding it very very helpful now mm -hmm. i do have one other question Right now, I just got all these papers stacked on my desk. As you're doing your parties, how do you, do you have these on a clipboard? Did you put them in a little binder or do you just have a stack on your desk like me? I have two folders. I have the, the uh, open party folder that I'm, you know, parties that are still open that I'm working with. And then I have another folder that that's after it's submitted, it goes into the submitted party folder. And then I can pull those out and do customer care or like I said, follow-ups, you know, if I need to go back. Sometimes, you know, you forget somebody wanted to book, you know, they want, they said, oh yeah, I want to do a party, but you know, maybe you didn't follow up with them right away. And so I, so I go back and recheck my papers occasionally just to make sure that I don't miss something. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Um, and to address one of the things you said too about if um, somebody books a party, um, I love it now that our system, uh, our web system, when you're in the party that you can go ahead and it sets it up for you right then. Yes. You know, you such just, a time saver. Yeah. So, oh my goodness. We used to have to go back in and type it all in, you guys. So that's mm -hmm. huge. Um, all right. Let's see now. Um, Trey, when and how do you um interact and begin your relationship building with your hosts um so i try to start as soon as possible you know and let's just say in sarah's party you know i'm interacting with everybody and i'm sending out those messages um as we're um as people are joining with the e-cookbook thanks for coming to the party um just to connect with them to try to get them talking to me and I know that we a lot of us play different games to get them to talk more to us so creating that relationship at Sarah's party with you know Bonnie Betty and Bill that's going to help me um in booking a party and in booking a party I'm always planting seeds along the way about what I do you know um I really find that people respond well to authenticity and to us being genuine and you know so when i tell someone i think we would have a lot of fun together have you ever thought about doing something like this it's it's because i'm really genuine and i really do think that you know we have a lot of fun with this business and why not share that with others and i just think that connecting with people in a real and authentic way is really great for your parties um i also make short little recruiting videos um that i share in my express parties you know were you watching this party and thought you know i really think that i could do something like this or how is she getting paid for that or i'm really curious i'd like more things for my kitchen too um you know and that can get the ball rolling so they can start thinking about it i also think that sharing our story um really will attract a lot of people to us especially people that maybe have a similar background or you know we juggle and spin a lot of plates um i knew we were talking before about just how busy we are and i think sharing with people that i'm a photographer and i own another business and you know i'm a small group leader and i'm now leading at mops and all these things that i do and homeschooling my five-year-old and i have a one-year-old and they're like, 
oh, well, if she has time for that, that's curious. Maybe I have time too, you know? Um, so I think just sharing, uh, being authentic, um, and then really trying to connect with the guest and the host um, on a real personal level. And I'm finding that I'm using a lot more videos and voice messages um, to connect with them and start conversations. I know I had talked with you about that before, about how you just like to send a little voice clips. Um, and then the first thing I do when someone shows interest, I say, hey, you know, we have a Zoom call on Wednesdays and just come and check it out. Hear other people's stories. You know, I really try to highlight that part too, that it is very, uh, no pressure. We just want you to hear other people's stories and ask questions. You know, we are not going to back you into a virtual corner and say, you got to do this. It's so good. You know, it's not going to be like that. Um, even though I think we are really passionate and love what we do, um, just to really let them know it's going to be a warm, inviting place. And you're just going to hear some different stories from everybody on our team. And um, I think that's been helpful. Good, good. Hey, Robin, thanks Trey, for sharing. Robin, um, what, what do you feel, um, how, how are you building relationships and interacting with your hosts and your guests? Um, I try to find stuff that we have in common and kind of play on that. And then um, just find out what, they're, what they like. And I, like someone um, yesterday commented that they like when I play post recipes because they like to try stuff different. And so I'm focusing on what they're, you know, what's on their wish list or what they've shown interest in and trying to find recipes that go with that. Um, nice. Yeah. Okay, all right. I like that idea. And so, um, all right, let's go on to hopefully that um, that was helpful and you got some ideas. I, I love to listen to everyone because, uh, Wait a minute, I didn't, Katie, are you still here? She might have had to run. I'm back, I'm here. Oh, yeah? Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> so I would love to hear some positive results from the host partnering um, action plans from last week. Um, and, you know, I wanna know how did your daily outreaches go? Um, how did your hosts like your partnership ideas? Can anybody um, jump in on any of these? Just pick one. Well, you know, I'm not really shy, but um, I actually created some graphics to send to my hosts that give an explanation for how to do some things. And I think that has really, really benefited um, our communication with each other. And um, because I know like Steve mentioned previously, um, some people don't know how to do a Facebook chat or you know, they're not really sure where to find some information. And so having those graphics handy, I think has been really, really beneficial um, and helpful. And I think they've really, really enjoyed um, that part of the partnership. Um, and so, yeah, that was, that was a really positive thing. And I also have been texting my host, um, getting off of Facebook messenger, excuse me. And I'm finding that is kind of earth shattering, um, right now for me, because I, um, I've had some hosts that are just not that active on Facebook. And so taking it to the text message has, been everything like they were not responding on Facebook at all and then when I shot them a text they were like oh my gosh I'm so glad that you texted me you know this really is a better way um to get a hold of me even though we met initially on Facebook and even though they never mentioned it wasn't a good place for them right, um, right. so I'm kind of finding that is you know maybe something that I need to start asking how can I best communicate with you uh, um you know yeah. we keep we keep adding to our little list of things that we do. So just wanted to share that little little insight. Hey, thanks, Trey. Katie, what about, do you text or do you uh, private message your hosts? Um, kind of both, it kind of, it kind of goes back and forth. So I'm, I'm just still starting kind of getting back into things. Um, nowadays, my, uh, I don't want to say my like, quote, real job of my like in-person job um, got very time consuming for a while. So I'm, I'm getting back into talking with people and reaching out and things like that. Um, so the parties I've had recently have been 
either like my mom hosted a party, which was awesome, um, or other like close friends who I would normally text anyway. So I'm texting them because that's just how we normally communicate. Um, but I'm, I'm still kind of struggling with getting out of like my own circle and then like hosting parties with people who I don't know, like really personally. Um, but once I get there, I guess I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, okay. but well, yeah. um, I know that Trey will work with you, uh, and building relationships with the people that are in your parties. Um, I know after they order, of course we can do texts, but until they do, you know, we're kind of stuck with, you know, the private message thing through Facebook. Right. Um, yeah. but it's, that's, that's how we have to flow. That's how, that's how we have to roll, you know? And well, that's Maureen. Okay. Yeah. This is Steve. Um, I just wanted to kind of give KT some, uh, pointers there. I don't know if she needs them or wants them, but I'm I'll that take kind it. of guy. I'll so. totally take it. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so I've started recently, I know, you know, following up is difficult sometimes it gets late at night you know and you I always kind of walk that line of oh is it too late to send these messages to these people or not <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. so I kind of have to stop I kind of have to stop myself as it gets later and later but um what I've been doing is sending out a message to everyone saying did you see how easy that 15 minute express party was mm -hmm. I mean let me help you um, get some kitchen tools or supplies and, and, uh, you know, and get at them for half off or discounted prices. And I bring up the host, um, the host discount for the month or, or the, um, you know, the reward that they get for the month. And then I put a little yeah. thing in there, like, uh, in the party itself, Hey, everyone, watch your message. Uh, watch your private messages because I'm oh, giving away a free idea. prize to people. And then that is such a good idea. <laughs> and the next, yeah. And then the next day I'll go in and send each person the e-cookbook message that says, okay. Hey, you've won an e-cookbook, but you could upgrade to a free prize. And I send an image that um, I got off from Google or something with five or six different uh, items that are under ten dollars, and I say you can upgrade your e-cookbook to one of these uh, gifts or prizes by just oh, booking a party. Okay. And not to mention, your hostess is going to get credit for that too. So it okay. starts that okay. conversation, and I usually get up the next morning to at least three or four messages back from people, whether That's it's awesome. A, hey, Steve, cool. I appreciate that you put that on the new consultant chat. Right and oh, yeah, um, I, I, Katie, did you see it? Um, like talking about because he posted it, so it's hey, Steve, would you post that on Pizza and Snappables? Because it was very good. Absolutely, very good. And you know what? It's it's all about building those relationships. And Trey talked earlier about um, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Oh. oh. Sorry about that. Oh my goodness. All right, go back here. If by any chance Zoom cuts us off, just come back in again and we'll keep going. I don't know what they're gonna do. But anyway, um, thank you, Steve. And, and I appreciate it if you posted on PC Unstoppables. Um, all right, and so let's go on to talk a little bit more about in-depth recruiting. And so, you know, what, what is five things about Pampered Chef that you love? What is five things? So Robin, tell me one thing. What's your favorite thing about Pampered Chef that you love? Oh, wow. Um, I know, it's hard, huh? <laughs> it is. Um, I, the, the relationships. Okay, all right. And Steve, what about you? One thing, what's, what comes, pops up first in your head? What I love about Pampered Chef is the support and the resources, the tools that come down from you and Trey and all of the other consultants. Okay, great. Thank you, Trey. Um, I, uh, 
one thing. I know. You know, it's something that you might not be thinking of, but the thing that I really love is the personal development. I feel like personally, there are just things um, that I feel like God has been working on me and, and, you know, I'm able to exercise my talents and uh, kind of refine some different areas in my life. Um, and it's be, and it's because of Pamper Chef, leading other people, encouraging other people. I am not naturally a positive person. And I know you're all pretty shocked about that because I've had people say, oh my goodness, you guys are so positive and encouraging. And I'm like, yeah, not, not normally, not normally. I struggle a lot with um, just self-depreciation. And the battle for that is to be positive and to focus on the good and, you know, the blessings that are in your life. And I feel like like Paper Chef has really helped me a lot with my personal development. And right. um, it's really exciting because I'm not only seeing it in me, I'm seeing it in so many other people that are growing and learning new things and adapting. And it's just really exciting. I love that part of it. All right. Thank you for sharing, Trey Katie. What about you? Uh oh, I think she froze. We, we might have her on bad connection. Gail, can you tell me one thing? I know it's tough. What what um what one thing popped out to you that you love most about Pepper Chef? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be real simple. Money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The money. The money's right. the money's great. Oh, and we got Mary and Bronwyn. They I bet they can share too. Yes, thank <clears> you. I got Mary Valentine. Yeah, mine's easy. It's what made me fall in love with it to begin with. And that would be the products. Okay. And Mary Bronwyn? I'm kind of like Mary. <laughs> um, the products, I've loved Pampered Chef for many, many, many years. And it's easy for me to try to sell it because I like it so much. Um, it is when you're passionate about something, it's, we're not even selling it, are we? We're, we're like talking to our cousin or our neighbor and just, you know, sharing what's, what's, what we have found and, and what's in our heart. So I appreciate that. Let me go back to my other. Um, all right. So when was the last time you shared what you love? And here's the thing, you guys, everybody needs to know uh, what Pampered Chef has to offer. And I have heard it said many times that there are recruits in the um, audience, but there's not a recruiter. If we don't offer it, uh, people don't know that we are interested in helping other people join. And so everybody needs to know. And so, um, I know that um, I've maybe come down a little bit, but for years I used to say, if anybody was in arm's distance of me, no matter where I was, they would know that I sold Pamper Chop. If I was squeezing melons at the grocery store, I would take extra long time squeezing melons until somebody asked me, it looks like you know what you're doing. And I would say, yes, I do. You know, um, I am a foodie and I've been with Pampered Chef for whatever. And I love melons. How, you know, do you like melons? And I would get it out of my mouth that I was with Pampered Chef somehow, some way. Um, when you go to the grocery store and you put your things up on the conveyor belt, right? You know, I, I, I know you all know this by now, that a lot of what we buy at the grocery store is tax deductible. So I would separate my groceries from maybe my dish soap or uh, laundry soap. And I say to the cashier, you can imagine what I say. I do Pampered Chef and my groceries are tax deductible. Can you tell me, give me a subtotal right here, please? 
oh, are you familiar with Pampered Chef? Let me give you a catalog. And so um, everybody needs to know what you do and everybody needs to know what Pampered Chef has to offer. It's pure and simple, you guys. <sighs> okay, wait, did I, did I cover? Um, in your life, who do you know that needs to know more about Pampered Chef? I mean, like me and Gail, we've probably, I think we've, everybody that we know, I think Gail, right, knows we do Pampered Chef. Gail's been doing Pampered Chef for 15 years. And so, I don't know, Gail, do you still run into people that don't know that you do Pampered Chef? Um, people that, that I know, everybody that I know, I think pretty much knows I sell Pampered Chef, but you know, you meet new people every day. So, uh, yeah, but, yeah, you, you know, it's, it just becomes after, after a certain amount of time and it doesn't take very long, it becomes part of your life and you just kind of, and you don't even have to talk about it because people will, will come up to me and ask, you know, well, what's new with Pampered Chef, you know, or what's, you know, what, have you been busy or, you know, they ask me about it. So, uh, you know, it just, it just becomes part of, part of you. Yeah. Um, so now, Gail, you touched on, you triggered something in my head. And that is when you leave the house, you need to be identifiable to Pampered Chef. Uh, oh, yes. Do you have a Pampered Chef tote bag? Are you wearing a Pampered Chef coat, jacket, t-shirt, sweatshirt? Uh, do you have it on your car? Um, did you guys see my little, um, Diddy, I posted in our PC Unstoppables today, the gas line at Sam's Club was huge because of the holiday weekend coming up. And so this lady pulls up next to me, actually it was a man, this man pulls up next to me and he says, hey, you got a catalog? Because on the back of my car, <laughs> it says Maureen Kimmel, Pampered Chef, catalogs on board. Yeah. And so I did have one and I hollered back to him after I gave it to him. And I said, message me first before you place your order and let me know we met at Sam's Club and I'll give you free shipping. And it's a little enticement, right? To get them to order. Mm -hmm. Yep. But who needs to know that what Pamper Chef has to offer? You got to, people have to know that you are a Pamper Chef consultant and that you are a Pampered Chef trainer. Even if you've never trained anybody, you tell them you are a Pampered Chef trainer. Maureen, if it, I'm sure you probably saw, but uh, Pampered Chef now has those frames for us to put around our profile picture on Facebook. Have you seen those? There's three, no, there's right. three different ones. It was in the what? stir. What? So, yeah, yeah. you can not. check my, check out my profile picture. It's got, it just says Pampered Chef around it, but it's, they're cute. Oh, excellent. Thank you. So that's something else you can do. That is a, that, that's, I'll be doing that when we get off this call. <laughs> so who wants to recruit more? Um, some things to consider. Create a group, a Facebook group for just thinking about it. So when somebody says, oh, you know, that sounds great. Just